Channel 4's Dr. Bruce Hensel will tell you how to spot the hidden dangers in deadly cosmetics. Tomorrow at 5, only on the Channel 4 News. Come to Blockbuster Video and deck the halls with Hollywood. Start by renting big new releases like Aliens 3, the epic Far and Away with Tom Cruise, and the thriller of the year, Basic Instinct. And while you're there, check out Blockbuster's great selection of videos for gifts. Because right now, every Blockbuster video is offering incredible savings on thousands of terrific movies for sale. Get into the gift-giving spirit with Walt Disney's Beauty and the Beast or the action-packed hit Batman Returns for just $8.95 after free rental coupon and a $5 mail-in rebate. And for a hilarious gift, get Sister Act, starring Whoopi Goldberg for just $14.95. Or everyone's holiday favorite, It's a Wonderful Life, for only $2.95 with the purchase of a $10 book of Blockbuster gift certificates. So come into Blockbuster today for the hottest new rental releases and great video gifts for everyone on your list. Blockbuster... first half and um, both schools moving that football on the ground and through the air. Claremont very effective especially with the underneath passes. Let's see if they can continue it. Claremont suffered a uh, well, uh, Eric why don't you cap off the uh, offensive drives and the action for us. We well uh, Claremont in the first half on the, uh, they had a punt on their first drive then on the second drive they tried a fake punt which was uneventful for them. They had a big chance to score later on then they fumbled the ball away um, then um, Janger was able to get a, his 15th field goal of the year. His next attempt, however, was um, no good. And then they ended the first half with an interception. Mandora, on the other hand, got a touchdown on their very first drive. Had to punt four times in a row, and on one they had a big chance to score, but was called back by penalty. And in their last drive, they only, were only able to get one playoff, and it was halftime. Morgan Janger on the kickoff here is taken. And beautiful run back there. Spun around, still kept on his feet. Running it back was Bobby Anders. And Anders out across to about the 20, well, actually about the 32-yard uh, line. And Greg Yates on the Claremont side brought him down. So this is, opens up the second half of action. Tartans uh, need to get something going here. It's a three-point lead and is by no means safe because Claremont has moved the ball on them. Two men in the backfield line up in the I formation for Glendora, Tom Gillum, and Lucas Llewellyn. Again, once again at quarterback, starter Robert Schultz. Bobby Schultz puts it up. It's complete. Nice complete catch. Dan Graham. Nice catch by Dan Graham. Right on the numbers, and he gets about seven, eight yards out of it. I wouldn't uh, say no to that on a first down. And uh, Lindora, a little bit on the move here. Can't stress enough. Both schools need the victory tonight, despite Glendora being a 3-1 and one in the league and Claremont being only 2-2. Two and two. Of course, the Claremont won. They both finished with 3-2 and two records, but Claremont would go to the playoffs by virtue of their uh, beating Glendora tonight to break the tie of the three and two league records. All right, second down, three yards to go after that seven yard game from the 40 yard line. And here we go, oh. Tom Gillum. Tries to run out side there, didn't quite make it. He's met up by Jeff Gates and Jason Hooks. And one player who's seen some uh, action tonight is Pat Maricello, I believe the last name is, on the uh, Claremont side. We'll see him from time to time on offense and defense as lineman, not ordinarily starter. His nickname is Cheese. According to Dave Hoover, why I do not know, but that is his nickname, and uh, he's a can't-miss player. According to Hoover, and uh, hasn't been involved in too many plays tonight, but he will. You'll see him. Third down and two, and this is enough for a first down. He spun around down near the legs. Lindor is uh, Tom Gillum once again carrying the football. Brought down by David Eshelman. Someone really seems to be taken off guard by that run. They're almost surprised. So they get enough for a first down out to about an extra five yards. First down and 10 yards to go at their own 44-yard line. Split receivers, eye formation this time. Five men in the line for the Tartner, for the uh, Wolfpack. Up it goes, it's complete to Graham, and he's got enough for a first down out across the Claremont 45-yard line. Lenore almost seems to be picking up where Claremont left off because Claremont was using that play to perfection against Glendora in the first half, really drilling him, and now Glendora is 
Open up here in the second half, doing the exact same thing back to Claremont, and it has been very effective for Glendora. And he got crunched by the uh, linebacker number 41, Scott Hess. First down and 10 after the 11-yard gain there at the 45-yard line of the Wolfpack. He lose one tackle, and look out. Ooh, after he even being spun around, he eludes a couple more, and finally the ball squirts free, but not until he's out of bounds. And he's finally shoved out of bounds by Claremont's number four defensive back, Morgan Janger. And Janger all over the field tonight. A player who definitely makes a name for himself on special teams and defense. Looks like it'll be second in inches for Glendora. Janger on the Claremont side, he had a few uh, fumble recoveries. Heads up play for the Wolfpack who took advantage of all the opportunities they had in that Upland game. Needed every one of them in winning 24 to 20. And uh, they need to play a little bit heads up right now though in order to stop the first Tartans. Second and one, more than enough for a first down. He's got it. And this is of course Gillum again. Gillum brought down by number 56, Patrick Marcerello. And there we see him. Cheese himself, Marcello. Marciarello uh, plays defensive lineman, also has seen some time on the offensive line for the Wolf back. And he's one of the villains that's done an absolutely fabulous job, according to Dave Hoover, first year coach. For the uh, starters that were not in because of injuries. All right, first down and 10 yards to go. Ball rests at the Claremont 29 yard line. Tartans are on the march. Look out. This is, once again, Tom Gillum. And Gillum might have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. He spun around and finally. Meets up with uh, Claremont's number 35, Brian Reed. Tom Gillen has, has seen a lot more rushing action this evening. He's usually made, um, used as a blocking back, but tonight he's been utilized as, um, as the running back, and he has been doing actually very, very well. He came on last year as a running back, um, was very effective, uh, was one of the top rushers in the baseline league, and, but they've really kind of laid off him this year. Second down, 10 yards to go at the Claremont, 29. Quickly, he puts it up in the air. Is the receiver going to get there in time enough? No, and the ball is thrown out of bounds anyway. Incomplete. Intended for Graham. And uh, it looks to me as if some of the sod on this uh, Citrus College field has been replaced. We're, of course, with the latent stages of the football season, and uh, with all the action that it sees with five schools playing here, it looks remarkably in great shape. And after some early rain, or I should say rain we had a couple weeks earlier, which affected actually two weekends of high school football, uh, we would think it'd be a muddy mess now, but uh, some of the Citrus crew must have been working overtime to get in the shape for tonight and other games. Down across the middle, it's complete to Dan Graham. Fantastic diving catch by Dan Graham. He's been making a bunch of those tonight, and he, is, he has really been a good star for them this year. Balls at the 15-yard line. What a beautiful gain there, about a little over 15 yards, and... Uh, Trying the Tartans appear to be on the ropes a little bit. They uh, crash through. And it tight end for uh, Glendora is number 81, Robert Payne. He's a senior. He stays in the block, and this ball is carried by number 45, Chris Spay, who I believe this might have been his first rush of the night, at most the second or third. Uh, he's been involved in other plays, but one of his first rushes tonight. Inside the five-yard line, he gains over 10 yards, and they are really moving, folks. It's first and goal. Ball is marked at the four-yard line. And they're chewing up a little time on that clock, too. And they need to push it in. They need to punch it in. Fans on their feet right now. Glendora on their 11th play of this drive. Wide receivers were lined up very wide, but they gave us the deep man, and he's stuffed. And it was taken by Tom Gilham. And he was flattened by Mario Leone, and uh, Leone had a little bit of help from the Claremont number, Claremont's number 49, Jason Hooks, one of the leaders on this team. Of course, Claremont High School, uh, according to the Inland Valley Daily Bulletin, went through some uh, tough times financially, as is, uh, I'm sure many schools experiencing with the shortage of funds for uh, high school athletics. Right down across the middle, it's complete. Touchdown, Andy Casotis. No one even close to him. Three yard touchdown pass. And the Tartans are enjoying a 12 to three lead and you might see him go for a two point conversion to make up for the missed kick last touchdown. What a play though, it just was uh, picture perfect and before you knew it they had scored. Very quickly run play. And into the end zone it goes. Fantastic play action break right there. Everybody on the Claremont defense just dashed towards the apparent runner for Glendora, but and Andy Consortis found himself wide open the end zone and easily got the touchdown. In kick formation, and they do kick, and it's good. And uh, they 
to connect. And that was Eric Amos doing the kicking honors. And the Glendore Tartans are, have a 10-point pad, 13-3, with seven minutes and 26 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Fantastic textbook drive there for Glendora. 12 plays. They start at their own 32-yard line, move the ball extremely well, march their, uh, march their way down the field on, for short, really effective gains, and they were able to cap it off with a great touchdown play. And for anybody who thought, uh, Eric, that that might have come out tonight with a little bit of dejection after uh, a thrashing by Chino last week, and Chino has an amazing player by the name of Alex Brown. I believe he's got about... Well, well over 10 touchdowns this season. I think in the teens, uh, he really just uh, was a one-man wrecking crew for the Chino Cowboys last week in their away game. Uh, haven't let down. They've, looked, they've been playing sharp tonight. And uh, they know it means everything. That CIF playoff berth. The winner goes and the uh, loser stays. Glendora at best can finish uh, as a number two team. I shouldn't say that. They can win a league championship, technically. This is taken by one of the upmen after a bouncy kick there. And this is Bo Haslam on a return there. And he gets out to the to midfield. And he is finally slammed to the ground by Alan Jerome. And uh, kind of a strange for a uh, squib kick like that. There's so much time left in the game. But that's what they did. It'll be first down and 10 yards to go at the 50 for Claremont. First possession, the second half. And uh, we're able to move that ball in the first half. Early they ran it, and then later they relied on the uh, some running, but uh, mostly the uh, short passes. It's been effective, and there's probably no reason for them to stop. I expect to see it. First and 10. Excuse me, not at midfield, at the 45-yard line. My mistake, at the 45, their own. And hit and knocked down by a couple of uh, Glendora black shirts. Ball was carried by uh, Claremont's number 42. Chris Egerton, he was uh, brought down by number 52, Jack Ma, and also number 58, excuse me, 56, Je Jesse Delgado. And about a yard or two gain in the play, call it a, a long one, call it two yards, the second down, eight yards to go from the uh, from their own 47. So it's a fight to the death for a CIF playoff berth. And even though Claremont comes in at 6-2-1, and one, again, one of those victories, a forfeit victory, so technically really a 5-3-1 and one team coming in. They can play football, as we've plainly seen tonight with the Glendora Tartans. Uh-oh, a fumble. Fumble the snap. And he gained the ball, but he lost it down, and he lost yards, too. Just rocked and socked behind the line of scrimmage by... Uh, that was number, I believe that was number 61, John Walker. That happens to be the biggest man on Glendora's entire team. He stands at a, at a relatively tall 6'8", and well over 200 pounds. Thomas Strickland, and also, I uh, believe... Robert Payne uh, helped in on that mass tackle. There were yards lost on the play, about three or four yards lost on the play. After the short gain on first down, it'll be third down and 11 yards to go. Claremont from their own 44-yard line. Three receivers are in, lone setback. Looks like Egerton, he stays in the block. And his pass, once again complete. Near first down, but not quite gotten. Alizada makes the uh, catch, ran for a few extra yards. And he is about three or four yards short, about three yards, no, actually only about two yards short of the first down. And uh, he was brought down, but it's a fourth down situation, and he was brought down by Zachary Dill among uh, some help from the defensive backfield on the Glendora defense. And we have a fourth and two situation. What are they going to do? They show punt formation. Well, they faked a punt earlier on. I don't see why they would not try it again here. Uh, kicking away. Nice kick. Appears to take it to Glenn or Claremont bounce. It does. And they're going to be downing in around the 11-yard uh, line. So Glendora with relatively poor field position here to start out. And even though Claremont couldn't do anything with the ball, at least they back them up for their start. Defensive lineman on the uh, Claremont side. We'll get their names to you here in just a minute. They've seen some action. I don't think they've registered a sack tonight. Well, maybe one. Include, uh, linemen include 56 and 47 on the Claremont side. Patrick Marciarello, also Kevin Struve. He's another one of those three-year starters. This is first down and 10 from the 11. And this is Gillum once again, and he is stuffed in a big way by number 49, Jason Hooks. 
Hooks the linebacker. Looks like a big guy for a linebacker, too. I'm surprised he's not playing defensive line with a size like him. Hooks is just waiting for Gilman that one. The minute he saw him, he just jumped all over him, and Gilman didn't have a prayer. Somebody missed their uh, blocking assignment on that one. And it'll be second down and seven yards to go. Long two gain on the play. We'll call it, we'll call it eight yards to go. Second down and a long seven from about the 14-yard line. Looks like he's going to slip and fall, but he gets the bass off there. And it's complete. Leaping catch, and he gets clobbered away. Gutsy, uh, gutsy grab there by Dan Graham. Dan Graham has had a good game tonight. He's caught a lot of passes for some big, for some big yardage. He's been one of the surprises this year. Last year, he didn't have as good of a year as he, um, as he had hoped, but this year has really come on and had a fantastic year. Morgan Janger was the uh, perpetrator on the defensive side of the football for Claremont. They got enough for a first down now there at the 27-yard line. About a uh, eight or nine-yard gain there in the play. And this is Graham on a draw. He gets past one tackler, gets past two, but he runs into the third. And once again, Morgan Jang has been all over the field tonight. Runs into him. Not really tackled, just kind of slammed their bodies together, and out of bounds he went at around the Glendora 39-yard line. Enough for a first down there, moving the sticks once more. About a 12-yard gain there. Glendora seems to be picking up where they left off at the end of their last drive. They're, they're really... Um, Really poking holes in Claremont's defense for some good yardage, and Claremont they seems are. to be on the, um, on the really on the defense. They're backpedaling big time here. Like they're having a hard time stopping, and I really like how Glendora in that last drive in here mixing the pass with the run. And this is Graham once again. He's got a little bit of blocking, but not all that much. Not enough to gain a lot. He might have gained two or three yards there. It rests. He gets hit right at the 40. And John Loder, and also let's see here, Eugene Bolton and Ma Maurice Beatty. A defensive back, Beatty, bring him down. And they gained about a yard and a half on the play. It'll be a second down and nine. A second and down and nine yards to go for the uh, Tartans. They have three receivers in, two to the right of quarterback Robbie Schultz. Lone setback. Stays in the block. Schultz fakes once. He goes to his left. He's looking to throw. He's got a man open. It's complete. This is Gillum. Look out. And Gillum he runs for a few more yards after making the catch and he's finally smashed and crunched from behind by number 49 uh, Jason Hooks and uh, they are on the march again Claremont really kind of um, relaxed there a minute when they saw Schultz stumble but uh, Schultz was able to see Tom Gillum who was wide open and get the ball to him and he ended up picking up um, some insurance yards on that one one minute, one man there missing on the defensive side of the ball is Cam Stiles. He was out the last two games. He's not in tonight for the Claremont Wolfpack. And his absence kind of hurts. This is first and ten. Look out. This is Hunter Rodriguez. And Rodriguez, he's inside the 15. And he just blasted right away. He had the blocking and just followed it. And, man, he made a play out of it. 47-4 and four gang up on the tackle. Morgan Janger and the main man on the play, though, Kevin Struve. The Glendora offense really killed teams with that exact same play last year with Scott Jacobson. But since his graduation, Glendora has um, enlisted a few players like Hunter Rodriguez and Chris Spade. They also use that play to perfection. A little over 30 yards gain. That place is first in uh, 10 from about the 12-yard line. Up. Deep corner of the end zone. It was intended for Bobby Anders, incomplete. Really couldn't get into position to catch it. He had two defenders right on him. And Anders uh, has also been a, um, a real surprise with the Glendora um, offense this year. Last year he didn't see much playing time, but this year um, Karnowski has given him a lot of playing time, and he has done nothing but um, please Karnowski with several catches and a lot of fantastic plays for touchdowns. Well, you know, Eric doesn't look like they have impressive speed, but speed enough to uh, you know get the job done and blasting those holes and uh, you know reaching the ball in the exactly. uh, medium range passes. A little bit of shifting in motion here. A little bit confusion on where players are supposed to be on this formation. And the Glendora backfield, second down and 10 from the 12 after the incomplete pass. Oh, quarterback draw here, look out. Schultz uh, gains a few out of it. He gets down to about the seven yard line, maybe five yards on the play there. And uh, Schultz is uh, met up by 61 and 79. 61 is Brian Ballesteros and the 79, excuse me, 69, Michael Jones. And Ballesteros also had a hand on the play. There were we're five yards gain, the play will be third and five. So even Glendora, even if Glendora can't punch it in, coming with at least a field goal, they'll still be coming up smelling like a rose here with a 13 yard, 13 point uh, lead. Three receivers are in and uh, they're all lined up, all lined up wide. 
Two to the right, one to the left of the quarterback. He's looking to his right. Oh, it's picked it's off. It's picked off. My gosh, in the end zone, he's going to run it back out. This is uh, Claremont's number 43. And there is a flag down, however. Flag down on the play, so hold the phone, everybody. And the interceptor of the pass. We got a number 43, and if we had his name for you, we'd give it to him. He's not in the program. We apologize. And didn't see the call there, but I believe it was against Glendora. Climb by Claremont, and uh, they'll be working first and 10 from their 10. Very and disappointing there for Glendora because they were um, they were on a great drive just, to, uh, just as they were on their first drive of the second half, but Claremont was able to crack down, on, um, crack down defensively. All right, first down and 10 yards to go. They dodge a bullet and have a chance, but they got to do something with it. They're down by 10, and we are late, very late inside a minute to go in the third quarter, and uh, we got to move that football. Single back set. Three receivers are in. Milgram scrambling, scrambling. Oh, he is sacked. Down he goes. He's tackled around the three-yard line. That might be the first Lindor sack of the night. John Walker once again comes away with a sack. That's his second of the, of the evening. And uh, really a team effort defensively for the Tartans. I was talking to Coach Karnowski earlier today, and he says there's no any, really any one team leader in sacks. This is a lot of guys, even a couple linebackers, have two sacks on the season. And um, that's the way it's been down through the years with Blundora, not only with defense, but they really, that, that's in the third quarter, they'll be changing sides here with Blundora again up 13 to three. But that's how it's been with the Glendor football uh, team over the uh, over the years. There haven't, on any one team, as you might see, like I mentioned earlier with Chino High School, they've got one star in the backfield named Alex Brown. Uh, there's really been a, a truly a team concept. There's never, to, to my uh, to my uh, memory, and I haven't been here for all the uh, years of Glendora football since Karnowski's been around, but there really hasn't been any one hugely dominant player, be it offense or defense, in the last five to seven years or so. It's really been a, a great team effort uh, from everybody evenly across the board, and that's the reason why they have uh, such competitive teams uh, in the baseline league and even in pre-league. And uh, it appears that this year is no different. No real enormous guys on this on this uh, on this team, uh, enormous in size, and uh, they were definitely outsized by Damian, and they managed to defeat him. And moral victory in itself, uh, winning at uh, winning at Damian. Of course, it uh, took some of the fun out of it after they lost to. Uh, you know the, the following week, which was which was last week, and they win the, need to win tonight. Maybe an empty victory earlier that season. Lindor's really had to play the part of David versus Goliath here in the um, 1992 season. This is second down and two yards to go. For, excuse me, second oh. and 17 oh. from the four, and that pass is batted down, incomplete. Zachary Dill just smothered that pass, and down to the ground it went, and uh, it'll be third down now for uh, Claremont. And they are facing. Uh, Facing a uh, precarious situation here. Not a lost cause yet, but uh, things are not going their way right now. I would say that Glendora is definitely dominating, despite the interception, they're definitely dominating the second half. Claremont lines up facing a third down and 17 yard situation for their own four. And Glendora's got man to man going here on the receivers. One linebacker stays deep. Three safety stays free in the middle. The ball is lofted high. It's and it's off. intercepted. Oh, and he's having a hard time bringing him down. It's intercepted. I believe the interceptor is Dan Graham. The pass was intended for Daryl Smith. Claremont returns a favor, and Glenn Dora is sitting pretty here. And the ball rests at the 23-yard line of the Wolfpack. The Tartans first and 10. So look out. A chance to blow the game wide open here. And they could very well do it. Just inside the uh, fourth quarter here. They can take advantage of this. They can just put the game away. First and ten. Split backfield this time. The receiver short. And it looks as if the ball carrier there is Lucas Llewellyn. It is. He pulls ahead. He's finally smashed up. And a couple of players on the front on the side. We number 35. Ryan Reed, linebacker. A short kick for a linebacker, but gets the job done there. It's a four-yard gain on the play, and they have it at the 18-yard line now. Second and six. Again, 13 to three, Glencore. Trying to add to that lead. This is Gilliam. Gilliam. I went off tackle play to the left side.
side with his left. And he gets a few more. Jason Hooks. Linebacker. Runs into him. But not before a couple more yards are gained. He gained four more yards. It'll be second, or excuse me, it'll be third down and two yards to go for a first down. And a great team effort, and they have really been effective, especially in the second, well, really throughout the entire game, but really in the second half, they haven't thrown a lot, but the time they've thrown it, it's been... Looks like we're going to have a run here. And they do. Escapes one tackler, and he is close to first down, but I believe he has not made it. And his momentum was stopped by a couple guys, took a couple guys to stop him up. And I think they are short. He was involved in the play for Claremont, among others, was David uh, Eshelman, number 25, defensive back. <coughs> Appeared to have some help there from uh, number 56, Patrick Marciarelli, Marcia Relio. Oh, it appears that Glendora will be going for it here on fourth down. Well, this is a little bit surprising. Anders does call the timeout, however, for Glendora. And I think they're going to mull over what they want to do here. Field goal puts you up by 13, which is a comfortable lead, but one touchdown play, and Claremont is back in it within striking distance easily, so they're going to take some time to decide there. Coach Karnowski is uh, consulting with some of his assistants. And while we have the time, let's give you a little bit more information on the Glendora coaching staff. Mike Jones, he is uh, coaching the JV and the varsity. He's one of the uh, coaches on the uh, Glendora side here. He's on the sidelines tonight. Freshman coach is Lee Spangler. And uh, Rod Tilton. He begins his third year in the Glendora program. This will be his uh, first year on the varsity staff. He's working with the receivers and the defensive backs. They've done a decent job tonight, so credit goes out to him. And he was a graduate of, the, of Glendora High School in 1985. Last played for the Tartans in 84. Kurt Dykstra, he's the head trainer. And uh, also Mark Shafia, he's a 1985 gr graduate of uh, Upland High School. And Shafia, while he's in college, he's uh, helping out with the freshman football team. Well, it appears that Eric Amos will be going for the 32-yard field goal. Kick appears to be good, and it's far enough, and it's in there. And it's now 16-3. So that drive ends fruitful for the Tartans. And with nine minutes and 44 seconds remaining in this football game on this beautiful Thursday night at Citrus College, Tartans appear as of for the moment they may be CIF bound. A, a field goal is usually something that the Glendora Tartans do not try, but um, Eric Amos has um, proved this year that he he can kick the ball and he can kick the ball very, very well, as along with Jesse Delgado. But they chose to go with Eric Amos here on the longer field goal, and Eric Amos came through for the Tartans. Glendora wins tonight, and Damian wins tomorrow night versus Chino in a home game. For Damian, uh, Glendora and Damian share the championship, but technically the Glendora Tartans would be the number one team by virtue of them beating the Damian Spartans and handing them their only league loss. Glendora wins and Chino wins. Chino and Glendora are tied for the championship, but Chino will be the number one since they beat them. Glendora, again, cannot make the playoffs if they lose tonight despite a winning record based on a 3-2. They need the game. This is taken by the up man on, a, on again, on a ground kick. On a ground-bound kick. This is taken by Haslam, and Haslam, a nice return out to about the 42-yard line. Took it around the 20, 22-yard line, and about 20-yard return there. Al Jerome, or excuse me, John Jerome, was the tackle of the play. Pack regroup here, the Wolfpack regroup. First down and 10 yards to go for their own 43-yard line, and they need to get something going and quick. They have to get two touchdowns, folks. And they have been showing effectiveness through the air tonight. I would imagine that that's what they're going to revert back to. One back set, three receivers are in all to the left of Derek Milgram, the quarterback, number 13. Five on the line for Glendora. And one of them crashed through and brought down number 42, Chris Egerton. And the tackler is yet to get up, and I believe it's number 52, Jack Ma. The uh, Claremont uh, running game has really been ineffective tonight. Uh, Glendora has really jumped all over the Claremont rushing game. I'm surprised that Claremont is not going to the air as they did early um, uh, late in the second quarter. It's going to the short passes that really um, ate away at the Glendora defense. Wouldn't you say, Pete? Yeah, it, it took some chunks out of the uh, gain. It gained some yards at, at significant chunks each, at each uh, play. That was only a one-yard gain. It's second down and nine yards to go now at their own 44. And they look to go airbound. They do, and it might be incomplete. Looks like it took a bounce there. Short 
of the intended receiver, Elgin Giles, number two. The ball did appear to be tipped on the um, defensive line by Glendora. So Claremont is now facing third and long, and of course, Tartans are going to line up, I would imagine, to expect a pass. And let's see if they bring in five defensive backs. They may. It looks as if they do. Let's see, one, two, three. Now they keep a 5-2-4 uh, here. Two linebackers are in, four defensive backs. And third down and nine yards to go from the 44 for Claremont. Up it goes. It's complete. He's got to get a few more yards for a first down. He may be short. Let's I don't think he made up, it. Find out. Danny Elizana made the catch, and uh, he was smashed up immediately. A couple of Glendora guys, including John Jerome and Hector Estrada. Estrada plays linebacker. Looks like it's going to be a fourth down and in inches here for the Wolfpack. And they got to go for it at this point. Less than one yard to go for the Wolfpack. Less than a yard, and uh, with eight minutes and 21 seconds remaining in the game, and a season on the line, you'll see him line up to go for this first down. Yeah, it does appear that way. Don't be surprised to see a pass here, Pete, I th um, because Claremont's really um, done a lot with that this evening. I believe they got two tight ends to once. Well, they got two tight ends in. They have two tight ends in. They stay in a block and plenty of yards gained there by uh, Haslam. And Haslam kind of punishing the Glendora defense on that run, too. Just slammed into one body. I can't, can't tell who it was there. One of them just bounced off of him. Haslam, the ball carrier, and uh, he was met up there finally by 48, Kevin White. White has also had some help from Thomas Strickland. And uh, more than enough for first down, though. They have it down about 10 yards in the play. It'll be a little more than 10 yards. It'll be first down and 10 yards to go for the Wolfpack. The ball rests at the Glendora 38-yard line. So hang on. Glendora targets. We've got a little bit of defensive work in front of the folks. This is Haslam once again. Second run in a row. Gains about four or five yards there. Out across the 35-yard line. And he's stopped up by uh, Jesse Delgado. He stuffed him. Gain about yep, five yards. And the front uh, wolf back. Showing ability to rush the football, maybe just trying to get the door to respect him for that before going to the air. So you never know, some of those uh, play fakes can, can really do you in. But they really haven't shown one tonight. Second down, five yards to go at the Glendora 34. Five men to the line once again for the Tartans. Takes his time, pump fakes, throws. He's got a man open. Look out, it's complete. Alizada's inside the 10. Had his man beat, and he left to make the catch. And he was looking for end zone, but Dan Graham caught him in time. But they're at the nine yard line, first and goal. That could be just what Claremont needed. And I think they really need a big play to um, get this offense started. And I think that play just might have done it. So Claremont Wolfpack, don't go down easy. You know they've been moving the ball. Probably their, their worst quarter offensively was the third. As I mentioned earlier, they had a touchdown call back, as did Glendora, though, so let's be fair there. But uh, have moved the ball and have shown effectiveness in doing it. This is kept on the ground. This is Haslam. He's inside the five. He was dragged down from behind and uh, by number three, Andrew Winters. Winters, a defensive back. Helping out also was Delgado, but Winters was the main perpetrator on the play, and this is going to be a second and goal situation just inside the five yard line. And they show two back set and two tight ends. Only one receiver. And this is given to Haslam. He's trying to get outside, not far enough on the off tackle play there. Dan Graham is stopped up, and he gets down to about the one and a half yard line there, maybe the two. And the two of the one and a half yard line or so. But they've gotten closer. This is going to be a third down situation in short. Dan Graham. I wouldn't know what to call here. Well, you, know, you know they can move it through the air, but do you want to take that risk this deep? Well, um, they, I don't think they'll be able to um, go for those short pass. They've been uh, successful early because the Glendora defense was hanging back on those other plays. But here in the, on a goal line, they cannot do that. So they looks like they probably will run. 
defense up up tight, understandably, and they just swarm over yeah. Haslam. I don't think he's got it, but he has gained yards in the plate. He is going to be very close to a uh, to the goal line there. He's going to be inside the one, though. He was gang tackled there by a couple of linemen, including number 55, Thomas Strickland. Excuse me, Strickland plays linebacker. Also had help out from some uh, defensive linemen there. I don't think there's not much of a decision here for Hoover. He's he's got to tell his team he's got they've got to go for the touchdown. Jose Clemente also helped out on that tackle, defensive lineman. This is a fourth down and goal to go situation. The ball is inside the one yard line. Two tight ends are in once again. Haslam and uh, Egerton in the backfield. They gave us to Egerton, the big guy, and I think he's in. Touchdown. He is in. Touchdown, Claremont, and they're right back in it. And it is now 16 to nine with the extra point to come. Great play call by Hoover. The um, Claremont big man was just able to crush his way right through the Glendora defensive line. They didn't have a prayer. Had the blocking. It was enough. Of course, on those rushing plays, you're pushing and uh, uh, delivering the blows when you're protecting on passes, which is Claremont has thrown a lot of tonight. You're absorbing them. As the defensive lineman come and rush you. And that extra point attempt is good by Janger. And Claremont creeps one point closer. It's now 16 to 10, and there are four minutes and 41 seconds remaining in the game. So who knows what's going to happen? We'll find out. And I think we're folks. I think we're going to be in for an exciting finish here. This is definitely a not a high-scoring affair, but it is an exciting ball game. And the Tartans, of course, I would imagine that the goal is to uh, just chew up time on that clock. They did have a long and uh, uh, how many plays was that drive? About 11 or 12 plays earlier. Yeah, that, was about, that was about 11 or 12 plays. That's correct. But they can do the same thing. And they've shown they can. They'll be in excellent, uh, excellent shape. Don't need to score, just need to hang on that football. There have been many longer drives in four minutes, 41 seconds in high school football. It's certainly possible. And the Glendora Tartans, uh, kind of strange here, they're playing, uh, their deep men are up relatively uh, close, including uh, Mitchell Phillip, number 26, and uh, number 45. Uh, Chris Bay, the kicker, has gone. Uh, well, he's not that just, just not that deep of a kicker. Thought maybe they were doing that for a reason. But they're not. This is uh, Michael Phillip. Phillip gets outside. Look out! Oh, but he kind of loses his balance there. Yeah, if he hadn't, he would have been, might have been free and clear. And he was uh, brought down from behind by Kevin Struver. At least he helped trip him up. And. Uh, Lindor's really got to move the ball here. They got some, they got some good field position, but their objective right now isn't necessarily to get a touchdown, but to really eat up the clock. They've got to get rid of the clock. And that clock is ticking right now, and of course the Tartans it can't tick any slower, and for the uh, Wolfpack it can't tick any faster. And this, or excuse me, the other way around, can't tick any faster for the Tartans. And the other way around for the Wolfpack. This is a gain of about, gosh, about seven or eight yards here out across the 40-yard line. Nine yards gained, and that was tackle on the play, number 49, Jason Hooks. He's been all over the field tonight uh, defensively. Excellent linebacker. This is the second and one situation. Nine yards gained that play, not eight, nine. And they may not have even gotten the first down here. This was uh, number 33, Lucas Llewellyn, who hasn't had many carries tonight. Few. Ballesteros, number 61, offensive lineman, smashes it to the ground. No gain on the play. It'll be third down in one situation for the Tartans. The clock is ticking, though, and we're about at the three-minute mark here. They can get a first down here. They will... I'm not going to say they're going to ice the game, but they'll be in excellent shape. I formation they come, split receivers. Six men in the line for the Tartans. Look out for the rush. And they've got enough for a first down. He's spun around. This is uh, Gillum. And Gillum is out across midfield to about the Claremont 48. He's finally brought down there by a couple of tacklers, including number 35 and number 4. 35 is Brian Reed, the linebacker, and 4, Morgan Jank. Big first down there by the Tartans on a third down. They really need that first down to be able to uh, move the ball more, repeat away at that clock, and not allow, allow Claremont's offense to get back on the field. And the clock is the factor right now as we are at the 2 minute and 39 second mark. It ticks right now. And I would imagine with this new fresh set of downs here, you're going to see the Tartans 
just keep it on the ground and melt that clock down even farther. High formation. Oh, they're going to the air. This is surprising, and he is sacked, and this will stop the clock. Surprising call there, and he is sacked and fast. A weak, weak blocking there, crashing right through to bring him down where uh, Claremont's uh, Kevin Struve and Eugene, excuse me, uh, Kevin Struve and Jason Hooks. That was a rather Both strange call by that was a rather strange call there by Karnowski. I would have thought that he might have tried to run the football because that usually does um, eat up a lot of t uh, time on that clock. But they um, dropped back for the pass, and it was uneventful for Gondor. Cool November night here, November the 13th. It's about a little bit of wind, not too much. Uh, I would say in the uh, low 60s, high 50s. Uh, nice night for football. Of course, CIF. Playoffs will begin next week, and no one knows who's going to be playing who yet until all the regular season games are over. We do know the Chino uh, Cowboys will go to the playoffs. That is the only certain thing in, uh, in Southern, in, in, in the uh, baseline league. Looks like, uh, looks like the Tartans will be able to hang on, and they will win a uh, share of the championship either way of, of baseline. That'll be uh, third in a row. Excuse me, fourth in a row and uh, fifth in the last six seasons of football involving them in a baseline league title with at least. Oh, oh gosh. Clobbered and hard. Jason Hooks just crashes across the line of scrimmage and absolutely just flattens quarterback Schultz and uh, surprisingly he gets up. He had to readjust his helmet there, folks, though. He's okay. Hooks, Hooks truly hammered Shell on that play. He's lucky to be still alive. He Tried was, to make him a permanent part of the field. He was jarred, and he's, he's okay. Taking a breather here, though. And it appears somebody has called a timeout. We've got the uh, Claremont offense take, or the Glendore offense taking a breather here. Some of the uh, water ladies bringing him out some... Uh, We've not mentioned it tonight, but if Glenmont and Glendora do tie in, there is the possibility of that right now. Glendora would get the playoff, um, get the playoff bid because Claremont's league record would be 2-2-1, two, two and, and Glendora's league record would be 3-1-1. One one. So uh, Glendora would get the playoff spot. Tartans will be facing a third down and 21-yard situation on their own 41-yard line as they come back to the line here. And... Uh, at this point, you might see him throw. Always a risk, though. I think it was Woody Hayes, the old Ohio State football coach who is now deceased, who said when you put the football up in the air, one of two or three things can happen that are bad. He was known for rushing teams, obviously, but uh, that's always a risk you take to put that football in the air. And they keep it on the ground. Safe way to go. This is Graham, but he's far, far short of the first down. Didn't even get back to the original line of scrimmage. And he was brought down by uh, Kevin Struve once again, one of the leaders on this team. Clarman has just called their last timeout, and it appears they will get the ball back, and they're really going to have to move quickly. On the uh, Glendora, excuse me, on the Claremont side of things, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the uh, head coaches, uh, Dave Hoover, some of the uh, other uh, coaches involved in the uh, varsity program, assistant coaches, defensive backs coaches, Jack Harper, linebackers, Don. Warhurst, defensive line is coached by Tom Wilson. Quarterbacks and receivers by Rick Dutton. Running backs are coached by Mike Breeden. Pete Pruitt is the offensive line coach. Team docs include Dr. Allen and Dr. Stiles, and the trainer is Tony Hughes. And we've got a... Uh, Karnowski taking his time coming off the field here. He is an excitable coach. He's an emotional guy. Saw him after the Damien victory, which was a great game, an exciting football game, and he was nearly in tears of excitement. Nice punt here. Not near the return man. Nice bounce. It's taken, though. He's got time to run it back, too. And he gets a few yards out of it. That's going to help. And he goes down around the 20-yard line, and the last, last man to hit him was number three, Andrew Winters, but the first man to slow him down was Thomas Strickland, number 55. So Claremont takes over first down and 10 yards to go at the 21 yard line of their own. They're inside two minutes remaining. They have a minute and 48 seconds to, to work with, and you're going to see them put it up because they got to get to that end zone. They are down by six, 16 to 10, and we're going to have an interesting finish. The clock is already ticking. This is really going to separate the men from the boys here. Clement's really got to do it here. One back set, three receivers are in two to the left side of Milgren. He puts it up, and that's batted down. 
Jack Dill once again with the bat with the batted ball. That is his second of the evening. And it could not have come at a better time for Glendora. A complete pass stops the clock. It'll be second down and 10 yards to go for the Tartar for the uh, Wolfpack. Wolfpack with the uh, modern tradition at uh, Claremont High School of uh, winning and victories. And it's uh, slow in the last couple of years, but uh, their season is on the line right now as we speak. For 1992. And shotgun they come this time. One back stays in, looks like he's going to stay in the block. He does. He's got some protection. He's got some time. He fires it across the middle. It's, in complete. it's intercepted. Uh, it's intercepted by, oh, man, Andrew Winters. And Andrew, the clutch play of the game, puts it out of reach. And that, the Tartans, I believe, are going to CIF. When that interception by Andrew Winters just puts a nail, puts a nail in uh, Claremont's cuff, and that is Winters' fourth interception of the year. Just out of the reach of the receiver. If he had at least have been able to tip it with his hands, he might have batted away from the reach of uh, Andrew Winters. And that might be the uh, play of the game, folks. And even though they didn't get much uh, yards on that drive, only a few, Glendora will just see him run out the clock. And they will earn themselves a share of the baseline league championship tonight. It's got to be a great feeling. This is a big win for Glendora. This will put them in the playoffs. One more time. And the flags are thrown and whistles are blown. Even before uh, Schultz was able to hit the ground with his knee. And uh, there's a little bit of pushing and shoving there. A little bit of, a little bit of violence on the uh, between the lines there. But let's find out what the call is here. I think that's just frustration on the Claremont part. They're very disappointed. They've really fought hard this season. Fought hard this game. It's a, it's a real letdown for them. And the call goes against the uh, Tartans. Legal motion is the call. And that'll actually be declined, strangely enough, by uh, Claremont. It was indicated that it was declined. Scoreboard reads second down and 10 yards to go, but the ball is spotted as if it was a fifth, second and 15 situation. It is. No idea why the official made the decline sign, but he did. But the penalty is in effect, and it's second down and 15 yards to go. Excuse me, it was declined. The four yards were lost on the, uh, the dive taken by uh, Schultz. And Schultz keeps it on here and loses a few more, but no, no big deal. They're just working on the clock right now. We're inside a minute to go, and the band, you're going to hear him strike it up pretty soon with that celebratory song. And the Claremont Wolfpack will end their season on a losing note. They'll be 6-3-1 and one for the season, but more importantly, they'll only 2-3 and three in the baseline league, and will miss the playoffs for a third consecutive season. Glendora's, third consecutive season. Glendora's really going to be watching the uh, Damian Chino game tomorrow night because if Damian wins, Glendora will win the baseline league championship be, um, due to their defeat of Damian. He goes down and flags are thrown. Hang on. It might be a legal emotion again. I believe that might, that one might be on Claremont. I, did, uh, I do believe I did see a Claremont player offsides. 21 seconds remain, and let's see here. We wait the call here. Well, these are teams that kind of took opposite directions. Offsides against Claremont. They'll march it right now. Teams that kind of took opposite uh, directions. Claremont did very well in the uh, pre-league uh, games. They were 3-1-1. One, one. Glendora just the opposite, 1-3-1. And, and of course, you know, they have some new players now, like they do almost every year, coming through the ranks here. Good sprinkle of juniors and even one or two sophomores are starters on the Glendora side. Clock is ticking. We're inside 10 seconds, and they're already going to start the celebration. Two teams in opposite directions, though. The Glendora Tartans struggled in the pre-league games and came through in the baseline league, as you can see tonight. Claremont did well in pre-league and uh, kind of faltered in those earlier uh, season uh, losses to Damian. Glendora did him in. Glendora eight, surprising. Him on the eight ball for tonight. Glendora surprising a lot of people this year. Not many people thought they could do very much with um, mo with almost all of their starters not returning this year, but they have really surprised everyone, including the newspapers, who ranked them number 10 a couple weeks ago. But uh, Glendora will be making a trip to the CIF playoffs one more time. So the Glendora Tartans will end their season on a winning out. They are 5-4-1 in regular season for 1992, but more importantly, four wins and only one loss in the baseline league. Gets them into the playoffs, 
and will win them at least a share of the championship. They may go as number one team if the uh, Chino Cowboys, uh, or excuse me, if the Damian Spartans win tomorrow. The Chino Cowboys win tomorrow with Damian. Then uh, while Glendore will still enjoy a share of the championship, they'll technically be number two. But they are in, and that's the important thing. And there'll be at least one more week of Glendora football in November. Well, this is Peter Hebda signing off along with uh, Eric, my partner here. Thank you. And, um, and we will uh, all glad that you joined us here tonight. And uh, hope you enjoyed the football game as much as we did. We'll be with you next season, I'm sure, for a lot of other CIF football action. Look for it. Again, the final score here tonight, Glendora victorious by the score of 16 to 10. For action deprivation. It's a feeling of mass neurosis that happens the weekend between the playoffs and the Super Bowl. The problem? No football. The solution? TBS action movie explosion. Yeah, we got a lot of the shooting, the hitting, the mauling, you know. Long bomb. That's really gonna hurt. <laughs> You're the man, Van Dam. It's a kind of a karate chop salad. A lot of bone shattering fun. Oh, so wonderful. I almost feel it myself. This is just normal, healthy aggression. No football, no problem. Six explosive movies, one action packed day. Coming Sunday, January 24th, only on TBS. So tell me, what are you feeling now? Ever want to find out how the other half lives? Then enter the Golden Globe Awards sweepstakes, sponsored by Kinko's. We'll fly you to Hollywood, put you up in a posh hotel, and give you $10,000 to spend on anything your little heart desires. Pick up an entry form at Kinko's, or find one in the January 22nd issue of Entertainment Weekly. Then watch the Golden Globe Awards on TBS. Fill out your entry form and mail it in. It's your chance to really live it up. Compliments of Kinko's and TBS.